Hello, I'm Eva and today I'm showing you a bunch of tricks I've learned about creative filters. They are all either cheap to make or get. Thanks for watching! When I started, I remember buying Kaleidoscope toys for like 10 cents and I made a filter holder using a CD as a template to cut a cardboard circle. I cut a smaller circle in the middle, inserted the glass part of the Kaleidoscopic toy in the center and glued with a glue gun so that it would stay in place. The cardboard part helped me have a grip on the filter, so it worked wonderfully with my 50mm lens, especially with a crop factor when I used it with my 7D. Also adds a nice vignette to the image. It works very well with tinier cameras and even cell phone cameras, but the downside of it is that you have to hold it, it doesn't really look professional. The kaleidoscope effect is gonna change depending on the angle you're gonna give it on top of your camera. So if I move the cardboard in a different angle, I get some very interesting effects, which I couldn't do if it was fixed in front of my lens. But I think having a fixed screw on kaleidoscope filter could look a bit more pro. I got a very affordable pair of kaleidoscope glasses and the glass parts are very easy to unscrew. I'm gonna be using a cheap UV filter and you really can get the cheapest one ever for this because it really doesn't matter. On the UV filter there's a side to screw in your lens. We are gonna glue our kaleidoscopic glass on the other side where it's all dirty and disgusting. I put four dots of glue on my kaleidoscopic glass on the flat side and then I simply place it in the middle of my filter and I press it. The glue spot shouldn't show in the image after. Once it's done, you can place it on top of your 50mm lens and you can remove the little strings of glue if there's any. It's very trippy. At f1.4, I couldn't really see any details, but at 2.8, you really start to see the shapes. You'll have to adjust your ISO accordingly. It gets really interesting when you move towards objects. I think it's something you could have a lot of fun with and you could explore in more artistic ways. <laughs> the color I chose was a rainbow color. You can simply repeat the same technique with any type of kaleidoscopic glass. And if you do not wish to screw it on top of your lens, you can also place it near another lens, maybe a bigger size lens, and you'll see that you still get some very cool reflections out of it. So it's a tool you can always keep in your bag because it's super useful. I feel that using prisms and crystals in front of your lens create effects that are more unpredictable and bring more uniqueness to your shots. One of the first things I bought when I started building my creative tools was a science prism. It creates nice rainbow reflections, you can also use it to split a part of your image and it works amazing with a 50mm lens. Then I got this Olga split image filter set when it was still cheap. It gives a very fun and unpredictable result. Since uh, it's about just 2 inches in size, it works very well with my 50mm lens or with smaller cameras, even cell phones. I got this page magnifying sheet at the dollar store for I think a dollar. It works really well to create distorted images. It's really fun to shoot little objects with it and even people because the distortion is just so weird. Try to stay alert of the objects you could use to shoot through for distortion or reflections. Maybe you can even borrow things from friends and give new purpose to old items because recycling is good for earth and it's nice to save money. If you're looking for a macro lens alternative at a very low cost, I suggest you go for a close-up filter. I own this one by Optica and it's very light, easy to bring in your bag and carry all day in case you might want a close-up. It goes on top of my 50mm lens and does a great job with almost no distortion. It doesn't totally replace a pro macro lens, obviously, but it's a good option. Don't forget that you can superpose more than one filter at once, so I could experiment with my page magnifier while having this Optica filter on and see how much closer I can get to my subject. You can also use this type of kaleidoscope and shoot through it with a cell phone or a small camera. It's something you can probably build by yourself too. One thing that is super fun to get into is color filters. I just bought myself a bunch of new ones in plastic. 12 are graded, which is nice for skies, and 12 are full color. Took me a while to finally want to buy some because I usually recycle transparent colored paper or would do it in post prod. But there's a huge difference between doing it in real versus in post. Let's try them out now and see how it enhances the image we want to capture.
Whitey? This trick's been around for a while and is to put petroleum jelly in front of your lens to create some blurry artsy effects. I'm going to apply it on the edge of a cheap UV filter. You could also use any transparent surface that is not directly touching your lens since it will get messy to clean after. It kinda looks like the lens baby without the high price. I'm leaving a circle in the middle of my filter where I do not put any jelly. This will allow me to have a part of the image that will remain sharp and you can create some texture with the jelly and play with the thickness and it will change the type of blur you're gonna get. Another thing you can do to frame your subject using blur is wrapping a piece of bubble wrap around your lens. It works great with any organic texture or plastic also. Simply wrap interesting textures around or in front of your lens and you get fun results. It works best with a 50mm lens. I also really wanted to try using stockings as filters. Nice. <laughs> Time to fail. Oh no! <laughs> oh, two pairs, okay. Yeah, two pairs, what like four legs. You ready? I think it works really well. It would be cool maybe with different colors of stockings or different patterns like fishnets, maybe even glitters. I was really inspired by Sam Erd, who's a wedding photographer. He's trying a bunch of techniques with magnifying glass and metal pipe. So I went to my local hardware store to get one. It was like a dollar and I got one similar to the one he's using. And the one I got was a like copper color. So the, the effect is a little bit different. I also tried with a guitar slider, one in metal and one that is transparent. The guitar slider is a little bit thicker than the pipe, so it gives a very different effect, which is really pretty. So I guess it depends on the type of pipe you get. My favorite was by far the copper tone one. You could really play with the color with the sun and make it really warm, which was super nice. You can give it some angles and it, it creates some very interesting reflections. The transparent guitar slider was also very interesting. So I asked Ben to stand in front and like, you can recreate some magical effects with it. I'm just placing the slider in front of my camera and it creates some very nice circles. So you can explore different types of pipes, different types of thickness and colors and then you'll get amazing results. One thing I wanted to try to was this big crystal ball. I guess what you can do with it is pretty restricted, but if you have a good concept, it's worth trying stuff because it's really fun. It would be worth trying with different type of lenses and try to maybe do even macro with it. 
You can also reuse your old DVDs or CDs because the reflections are super pretty and holographic. So I'm simply placing the reflective part next to my lens and I give it an angle. And you can superpose two images together like this or just create some rainbowish type of colors. I'm probably a trash lord by now because I keep finding amazing pieces of trash that I reuse to shoot through. I was so excited to get these three lens filters creating starlight effects. It changes the shape of the light sources to either create 4 points, 6 points or 8 point stars. There's two rings on each filter so that allows you to turn them making like the stars turns too. So it's kinda cheesy but like good cheesy, right? Um, hmm. The filters are made of plastic with many lines scratched in the X pattern and that's those lines that create the stars effects. If the lines had colors, the stars would end up having this color. I'm gonna leave some do-it-yourself tutorial in the description so you can check out to make it for free and it's quite easy so if you have a transparent CD case, a screwdriver and a little bit of time on your end then you can do it. I've decided to buy them for weddings because I wanted it to look a little bit more pro and like 3 filters that look pro for 19 bucks sounds good to me. I feel like it could be really fun for any disco shots and you can make like the same effects as in Snoop Dogg's Sensual Seduction. So everything that is more like 60s, 70s, disco-ish, you can do with that filter. It looks really neat. So I wanted to make this blue streak filter so bad but it was so expensive. So I decided to go to a store where they frame paintings and like artworks and they gave me a free plexiglass piece. For this one I'm using my biggest ring size because uh, I wanted to be able to use my extension ring and place it on every lens I have. Since it was free I just got like what, whichever size that was large enough for my filters. So first you need to cut it and make a little streak in, either with a screwdriver, a flat one or a exacto. And you try to be straight and not go further than two millimeter in between each line because like you're gonna see the streak you make in the bokeh after so the closer you get in between each line the better it gets for the bokeh shape so i'm just taking my plexi that I, that I did and i glue it on top of my 77 millimeter ring if i want the streak to be blue i need to apply the color blue to all the lines otherwise it will just like take all the colors that are from the light as is and you make sure that you put it on the vertical on your camera too, because if you put it horizontal, the lines are gonna be vertical. So I'm taking my blue permanent marker and I'm just going through all the lines. So here you go, you have it, all the white lights are gonna be bluish and make sure your white balance on your camera is also to like a more cold tone otherwise it will look too warm type of look you would expect the bouquet to be in an anamorphic shape which is not since it's not an anamorphic lens so i'm gonna make a bouquet filter holder that way you could create any shape you want for your bouquet an anamorphic bouquet is an oval shape you can find many patterns online for free and once you build the bouquet holder you'll be able to put it in I'm gonna place a bunch of links that could be useful for that in the about section so if you want to have extended knowledge about how to create different type of like bokeh shapes you can go there. I was lucky enough to get the bokeh master kit from do-it-yourself photography. It, it's still pretty expensive to get so I, like the second time I lost the older part like the part that holds your filter in the middle so I was not ready to ask the company to send me another one again. 
If you have the money, it would be better to get the plastic version. Also, if you're lazy, because it's already done for you, so it's nice. In terms of durability, I think my version will last like two, three shootings. And you can take your lens cap as a guide of how large you want the circle to be. So I'm just taking my lens cap, I draw the outline, and then I create like a sun shape, and I make two lines where I'm gonna put, like insert the little middle circle thingy. So in the middle you have to like cut uh, little rectangles so that your shape will show. So here you have it, you can place any shape in it. So you could just use a regular elastic or any type of elastic and put it around your lens. Uh, it works better with a 15mm lens. I'm not going to create my own bouquet. Inside a camera lens, there's a series of blades that open and close to control the amount of light reaching the sensor. So the appearance of the bokeh depends on the shape of the blade. If the blades are straight, the bokeh will appear as a blurry octagon. If the blades are curved, the bokeh would be more round. So if, if you put a piece of cardboard with a penis shape hole in it over the lens, the hole acts as your aperture blade giving you a penis-shaped bouquet. I really wanted to make a diffraction type of filter because I thought it was fun to see all the light colors and it's really rainbowish. So I got this big diffraction paper sheet online on Amazon and I got a smaller version first, uh, like a science diffraction grating thingy, but it was too tiny to really shoot through it, so that's why I got the bigger sheet. So it's pretty much just like getting the filter, UV filter you want to use, and then you cut a circle of the same size, and then you glue it with like four little dots. And there you have it, your filter is done, and you can do it with any type of transparent holographic sheet or but uh, you could do it with funkier things, even like Christmas paper. I'm feeling